Hi! Today I'm covering The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. This is an incredible story which is told through a series of letters. Uh, it's through the eyes of a girl called, or a woman called, um, Seely, who's around 14 years old and it goes through the entirety, pretty much, of her life. Um, she has some really horrible experiences growing up, um, which uh, starts with the separation uh, from her sister. She's also been raped by her father and had two kids by him, uh, which is just, I'm talking quite lightly about it, but it's a really horrible thing to go through. She's, she's kind of, she, she only very quickly talks about it at the beginning part of the actual book. And then it um, goes off into it a bit further on once they're a bit more grown up. Um, she then is married off to a man who's supposed to marry her sister, uh, and he's called Mister. Um, and uh, he always clearly fancied Nettie, but uh, instead he has to put up with Seely, who he thinks is like, not as attractive, not as interesting, um, and so she has to suffer taking care of his kids and it goes through her kind of day-to-day -day experiences as um, a black African-American woman living in the South um, in America. It's just really richly told through this very broken language because she's uneducated and she struggles to articulate herself but it's done in such a frank and honest way that it's really relatable even though I am clearly not a black African American woman in any way, but you can share her experience and empathise with it. What I particularly love about the story is the surrounding characters. I particularly love Sophia and her partner Harpo. Their relationship is the kind of next generation on from her poor experiences with her father and her partner. Harpo is told by his father how he should be and he's told that he has to beat her and that's reinforced by Seely, which she later regrets and there's this beautiful moment where they kind of come back together and they start cutting up scraps to make a quilt and she can finally forgive herself because she's been forgiven by Sophia. Whereas for Papo, he eats his feelings because he's struggling with his identity as um, the kind of the man of the house and how he should be able to beat his woman. She should be looking after him and uh, not being such an independent spirit. And it causes him to <laughs> just throw up all his feelings once he realises that he shouldn't actually behave that way. In terms of looking at gender roles and looking at an identity, I thought it was a very poignant way of bringing those stories together. Um, but the main um, story is focusing on um, Seely's life and her identity as a black woman living in the South. She is treated atrociously throughout her life and uh, she struggles with the fact that she doesn't actually have any positive experiences from Mr. Her partner. Um, and she's obsessed slightly about this other woman called Shubs. She's portrayed not explicitly, but uh, as a bisexual character. And she clearly uh, enjoys her time with Mister, but she also has a very kind of private relationship with Seely. And their um, passion for each other grows very slowly throughout the book. And um, Seely is clearly interested in her and, and finds her like, really refined and interesting and daring and everything basically she's not. There's that classic line from the movie, you sure is lovely, um, which Shug uses when she first meets um, Seeling. Um, but then after a bit of resistance and resentment, there is this scene where the, um, uh, Shugs is taking the bath. Her hair is being combed by Seeling. And at the first bit of all, she starts to struggle against her and she's really like resisting her and she hates what she's doing. Um, but then she kind of settles into it and it reminds her of the time when her mum would look after her and she's soothed by the water of the bath and she's soothed by Seely's hands. And that is incredibly exciting to Seely. So it's that moment where they become kind of bonded and have a 
had experienced. It's what I started to look at uh, and unpack the image. Then, um, on top of that, there was a part in the book which wasn't explored in the film, the Steven Spielberg film, because um, I can remember watching it when I was quite young, and I didn't really understand that there was any sort of sexual tension going on between Celie and Shook. Um, and that's because it wasn't very visible. I mean, it was obviously visible when I was quite young and naive. Uh, they could have gone a lot further, because um, Celie has a conversation with um, Shug about how she feels when she's having sex with uh, Mister. And she basically says that it's like he's taking it on her <laughs> every time they have sex. And Shug is like, whoa, you're, you're still a virgin. You've not had an orgasm. Um, we need to help you and make you experience the rest of living. Um, and so she basically gets her to take a look at herself with a mirror. Um, and she realizes this the kind of internal universe that she has to herself. And it's the first time she's really exploring her sexual identity. And I thought that was really um, powerful for that time that it's portraying. It's actually, it was written in the 80s, um, but because of what it was actually doing, the way it was exploring those things, it's quite brave, like really brave. The image which I've been looking at for the colour purple incorporates uh, a mirror with a rose because she describes her labia as the uh, petals of a rose and um, there's a button which she describes um, how, first of all, it gets all hot and then it melts. Um, so I've incorporated that into the image, not as an explicit way, but just a, as a, an acknowledgement to the way it's described. So the story continues and goes on. Uh, I don't want to uh, go too far into it because I think everybody should read it, but uh, the main theme explored within that is her relationship with God, who she fears at the beginning and she is devoted to, and she um, later becomes more ambivalent about those feelings and she decides to write to her sister instead. There's this great tension between how her spirituality is being dictated to her and where she wants to take her spirituality for herself. It's Shugs who actually points out and says um, she thought that God would get that people didn't appreciate the colour purple in a field as they pass it by. And it's that idea of celebrating beauty and embracing living rather than stuck in a church and um, we going through dogma and um, being saintly. Um, so the, the book covers a lot of very challenging themes in terms of the sexual abuse that she's going through, uh, gender identity for herself and uh, what she wants to become, those who surround her and tackles racism in terms of uh, Sophia goes through this very brutal experience of supporting a white wealthy woman and their family as a result of um, standing up for herself and is uh, captured um, really vividly in the film um, and it's, it's quite difficult to watch. It also covers issues of friendship and faith and education and sisterhood. It is an incredibly varied story um, but told in actually something which is really quite small. I love it for that. I love everything about it, the, the way that you feel you are looking and experiencing her life. So this is a review of The Colour Purple. I hope that you enjoyed it and that if you enjoy any of the characters from The Colour Purple that then it makes you want to do a drawing and uh, create a, a scene from some of her narrative and then share it on either the Facebook or the Instagram using the hashtag bookdraw uh, and help encourage other people to pick up and read the book or if there are other characters that you want to celebrate and talk about, please do share them with me, tell me about those stories, tell other people, hopefully you will come to this channel and enjoy that and let's build something together where people can talk and celebrate different queer voices. Okay.